uh, joins us now via Skype from Bochi City, which is the capital uh, of Bochi State. Uh, good evening, Your Excellency, and congratulations uh, on your recovery uh, at this time. Thank you very much. Now, what can you uh, tell? Good evening. What can you tell us about? Uh, how did you find out actually that you had COVID nineteen? Well, I found out I had one because of my initial contact with someone that I said I met in the aircraft uh, that had COVID-19. And then when I knew that, I decided to go into self-isolation. And when I was isol while I was in self-isolation, I was tested and I was found to be positive. Now, what was the experience, what was the experience like going through the process of, you know, uh, testing, discovering that you were in fact positive, and then the treatment process up to the recovery, and then of course your, your capacity to leave uh, the isolation center and then return uh, to normalcy. Yes, uh, my, my brother, it is a very traumatic experience for one to know that you are infected by a disease for which there is no vaccine, presumably. I thought I was going to die, but uh, certainly I had a very strong will to leave and that I was put on certain medication by my doctors, that is antibiotic and, my, and uh, uh, malarial drugs. I never had any manifestation of the symptoms all the period that I was there, but I was under extreme fear and suspense that it may come any time. And so I was just doing some exercises and then taking some, anything that I think will help me, like uh, the black seed oil, and uh, of course, a bit of cola, you may not know, but because the instinct to live or to survive was so huge that one is always doing whatever one would do. And at the end of the day, even if I feel some little itches on my body, I would think that that is the beginning of the symptoms. But after the second test that I went for, uh, it still showed then they take a vaccine for this disease. Because if the Nigerian doctors are treating us in isolation and the manifestation of the symptoms are not even allowed to devastate us, then there certainly should be symptoms. I think we should tell the whole world that we should try these malarial drugs and antibiotics because after all, if you don't try it and you go into extreme condition, you will die. So it is better you try because in Nigeria, we have been using these drugs for malaria and other things. And so it is not going to be anything out of, uh, out of the way to do it. Uh, Your Excellency, uh, the, the visuals that uh, we, we will be showing our viewers now show you in the immediate aftermath of uh, your recovery, the day you came out and you actually spoke to the people and so on. But then uh, quite a number of people were surprised that you went, uh, those are the visuals I'm making reference to there on the screen. Uh, uh, but you went straight from there to the mosque. Uh, for, uh, for prayers, and there were quite a number of people who were a bit surprised that first, when you addressed the people, you were surrounded by so many other people uh, who, were t who were not observing the necessary social distance from you. And then you went to the mosque, and there were a lot of people in the mosque as well who were there, presumably, uh, to felicitate with you on your recovery. Yes, uh, as I said, when I... Okay, I've lost the voice. Are you hearing no. me? Yes, we are hearing you. Please proceed, Your Excellency. That thing that we saw, the picture you saw in the, when I came out, we have exercised the one meter distance. And then I was very uh, uh, particular about it uh, because many people came and there were over hundreds and thousands of people that said nobody should come to my house. And you can see me with the deputy governor and the doctors from the NDC and the rest, and we exercised some distancing, maybe because of the positioning. As for the mosque, it was very important for me to go there. And we exercised the distancing in the sitting arrangement so that we will show people that, yes, what we can afford in Bochi is just social distancing. I cannot afford the lockdown. When I, while I was in isolation, I was surprised with the attitude of the federal government established committee on COVID-19. Because I was an index guest. Bochi State, out of the northern part of the country, is the first area where we had this, this incident. I thought the federal government would have considered it expedient to lock down Bochi, Lagos, Ogun, and FCT. But we were excluded. Even in the testing capacity, 
Mind you, I was the first governor in Nigeria that went to the National Center for Disease Control to seek for solicitation for partnership. And the DG was so excellent. He said they had a budget to establish a testing center for Lassa fever and yellow fever, which were ravaging our rural areas. Over 100 people died. Our district had died. And by the time I caught this disease, I saw it would be an epicenter, but we were excluded for political reasons. I don't understand. And so I felt we don't have the capacity, the economic capacity to do a lockdown. After all, if you don't give palliation, there is no how you will tell 7 million or 8 million people about you. We have been devastated by demographics. Uh, and so, instead of leaving, giving us the capacity, the central consideration uh, included in the whole thing. So, honestly, I feel so bad, and I think this is an opportunity to call on Mr. President to say, Bauchi is the epicenter of COVID-19, and we are bordering seven states, and we don't have the capacity. It is morally wrong for me to lock down everybody and stop them from going to act for their daily subsistence. When our, our macroeconomic reality is that we go for daily uh, work to, to act a living or to put food on the table. Now, uh, Your Excellency, we have just one minute to end this. So I'll just ask, what then? I mean, if you're not doing the lockdown, what then will you be doing uh, in Bochi State to curb this pandemic? We are doing a lot of sensitization. We have closed our border. Hello. Yes, if you are hearing me, what we are doing as a state, we have closed all our border. You can see since my own index case, even the reflection of six or eight number is not true because we have only four cases in Bauchi and I'm out, we have three. And of course, it has not escalated. So what we are doing is to close our borders to make sure nobody comes into Bauchi and we are sensitizing, we are providing masks in the markets, in the, everywhere. But we cannot do a lockdown because of the economic reality of Bauchi. I'm sorry, we need a lot of assistance from the federal government. We felt right from the onset, if you wanted to do something on a national perspective, Bauchi would have been the first consideration after Ogun, Lagos and the FCT. All right, indeed. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency, the Governor Thank of you. Bauchi State. Thank you so much for your time Thank you. uh, at, at this time. Thank you so much. The governor of Bauchi State, Bala Mohammed, there sharing his experience uh, being diagnosed with COVID-19, recovering, and what the situation in Bauchi is. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll talk to some of the survivors uh, who have been sharing their experience. So please stay with us.